Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this awesome connected 3D printer webcam. So to get started, you first need to connect the power wires, the ground and the five volt input. The pinout will be shown on the screen. Make sure that you actually connect it to the five volt input and not the 3.3 volt input since that will fry your ESP. I opted to connect the wires to a DC jack that makes connecting the camera to the power distributor that I made in the previous video possible. So get yourself a DC jack and solder the positive wire to the inner pin so it's center positive and don't forget to add a heatshrink to both wires. Now this is the time where you want to program the ESP32 cam server. That's an example sketch when you download the ESP32 board modules from the Arduino. Before you do that, make sure that the resistor next to the antenna connector is set up for the internal connector. Or when it's set up for the external connector, make sure to connect an antenna. Otherwise your ESP or any other device that uses an external antenna when it's not connected will be damaged and might not work. Before we continue, make sure that the resistor next to the external antenna connector has been placed like the left one and not like the right one. This ensures that you're uh, capable of connecting an external antenna. Now grab your 3D printed camera cases and basically insert the ESP into the case. Make sure that you uh, route the power wires through the antenna connector before you actually solder them to the ESP. That will make life much easier. As you can see, I did not do that. And I had to, well, fiddle around with the wires a bit to get them to fit through the connector. So due to my quite stupid mistake, I was forced to drill out the antenna hole to make it big enough for the DC jack to fit. Uh, I can recommend that you don't use metal drills to drill out uh, plastic, because that simply doesn't work. Then finally you can grab the top cover, push it on there, make sure that it's quite tight so the camera doesn't fall out. Then get the base out that you will push the camera into that will finally attach to another part that's attached to the 3D printer. Make sure that you push this one in uh, hard because it's a very tight fit and you might want to put something underneath it that you can use to pull the uh, whole assembly out later on since it's very hard to get the actual camera uh, housing out of that uh, holder again. Uh, also make sure that you don't push it too far if you have got a thick antenna or a thick power wires since that will basically uh, damage the, uh, the wires and that's not something that you want. Then get yourself an M4 nut. Uh, I can highly recommend uh, a kit that's shown on the screen. It contains uh, M3, M4 and M5 in various lengths uh, and the matching nuts. Uh, place a nut through the hole of the 3D printer uh, stepper motor mount. Uh, it will also go through the uh, attachment. Make sure to tighten it, but don't tighten it too much since that will prevent you from adjusting the angle of the camera later on. So finally, the time has come to mount the camera to the 3D printer. Now you might be able to get away with using the screws that go into the stepper motor. But since I'm using a stepper motor damper, I have only got two screws mounted to the damper and then to the stepper motor. And those screws are just long enough to only fit inside the damper and they don't fit through the base that attached to the stepper motor. So I used a zip tie. Uh, you might want to use two or you should use two actually. Make sure that you put them in a diagonal way and not next to each other since that's, yeah, that's better for uh, stabilizing the camera. I only did have one of those white things available and the others were just too big and didn't fit into the hole. So now the most painstakingly part of this whole adventure 
testing different antennas to check which one has the best uh, reception. You might also want to adjust the resolution at which the video is streamed, since that will greatly affect the quality of the stream. I had to decrease it a bit. 1600 by 1200 was just too big. I think I've got it at 1024 by 800 or something. And that works fine-ish. Uh, when you see those white bars at the bottom or at the top or left at the right of the image, uh, you know that it's the time to decrease the resolution since the ESP isn't able to keep up with the frames at that resolution. Hey guys, this is Tim. I hope you liked that video. If you want to see more, please make sure to subscribe. Uh, you can also share the video with your friends and hit that like button. I'll see you in the next one.